Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. So glad you could join us. If you will, take a moment to register your attendance on the welcome cards that are provided in the pews and which we bring up during our time of offering, which is any time that music is being played during our worship service brought here to these offering plates in the front. And if you have a prayer concern you'd like to share this morning, please share your joy or your concern on the pray cards that are in the pews and hand those in to the ushers during the singing of our first hymn. Uh, we have some exciting news. The rummage sale is off and running. Many of you have already been helping with this wonderful fundraiser for, uh, that gives so much money to charities in our area. And I've been asked to say to you, thank you for the great crew that gathered yesterday. The bin is now empty and donations can now be brought directly into the fellowship hall. We will accept donations every day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and on Sundays from 9 to 11.30 until all the way through Friday, February 11th. So uh, thank you to all you who are helping with that and um, we continue to keep the rummage sales success very much in our prayers this year. Also, the Explorer's Bible Study will be moved today to the East Building. There's a lot of hubbub because of the rummage sale uh, kicking into gear. So please, if you're in the Explorer's class, move to the East Building where um, there's a table there for you to meet. This morning, I'd also like to invite, I believe we have a, uh, an announcement from Molly Robinson about a fundraiser related to the rummage sale. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, the rummage sale is always already in full swing over there, thanks to all the volunteers who have been working over there so diligently already. Um, the church office received a request for help. Um, if you are a baker, start your ovens and um, please bring something to uh, either one of the weekends for the rummage sale. We also have like a bake sale that happens during the rummage sale. So if you are someone who likes to bake and would like to donate something to the bake sale for the rummage sale either weekend, feel free to let the office know and I can pass that word along for you. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. And we have three prayer shawls to be blessed this morning. Um, these two, they are to be given to people who dearly need healing. Um, we have them for Garrett, who is a young man. Uh, he's actually 13 years old, who has been suffering from brain tumors for much of his life. Sandy Duff um, requests a prayer shawl for him and one also for his mother. And then we have a request from our own Linda Boyle for her neighbor, Annie, who is also uh, living with cancer. And we ask prayers for all of their healing and strength. Uh, let us be in the spirit of prayer. Dear Lord, bless these shawls, the work of loving hands. We give thanks for the hands that made them, and we pray for Garrett, Emily, and Annie, who will receive them. May your spirit embrace Garrett, Emily, and Annie through the gift of these shawls. Weave us together in a fabric of Christian love so we may serve your kingdom as one. Now please stand as you're able to join in the call to worship. Open our eyes, Holy One, to your presence in this place. Open, Open our, our hearts, hearts to your, your spirit, spirit wherever we go. Show us your life in the midst of our lives, reflected in each person, alive in our own bodies and souls. The heavens themselves tell the glory of God. May our words of prayer and songs of praise be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength. Our salvation.
our first scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second scripture is from 1 Corinthians verse 12, chapter 12, verses 12 to 21 and 27. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me before I offer a message. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing, O God, in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last Sunday and this Sunday, we have heard scriptures about the body of Christ, the community of the church, and how we function together, how God is revealed through all of the members of the church, all of the members of Christ's body. This belonging to community is essential to our spiritual health. Without that belonging and connectedness, we begin to become isolated and vulnerable. The Apostle Paul had this wonderful wisdom, and he taught this metaphor of the body of Christ early in the history of the Christian church. There was already that in that understanding, in the historical understandings in those times, there were um, metaphors of the body, but they were meant in a different way, that you should obey the head and that all members should be subservient. But Paul takes the metaphor of the body in a new Christian direction, and he says you're all connected, and you're all equal. Every member of the body, whether a human body or a community of faith, is indispensable and needed. We know that this sense of belonging sustains us. It gives us strength as human beings and as Christians. We know the strength that we find in church, that we receive from these friendships, from the smiles and encouragement that we receive in, in better times and embraces when we can get a little bit closer. These are indispensable to our survival as human beings. We know that this strength supports us in powerful ways. Sometimes we hear people say, I'm a spiritual person. I don't need to go to church. I believe in God, but I just don't need to go each week to worship. What we might want to say in answer to that is our own witness and to say, yes, all those things are true. You can worship God at home. You can believe in God by yourself. But we find a unique strength in the connection of the body of Christ in, in Christian community that we cannot find elsewhere and we can't go it alone. We will be much more vulnerable if we try to do so. Sometimes we marvel at the fact that in our later years, we come back to church more, that churches, yes, have more people who are advanced in years. And sometimes people will say, well, maybe folks are just hedging their bets, trying to get to heaven towards the end or something like that. But no, I, I've come to understand that it's something else. People realize the value of this connection, of the support of a community of faith. The wisdom of the years teaches us this. It doesn't take long to learn it. Once you've lost a loved one or lost a spouse, you suddenly feel how dearly you need this community 
of faith. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of my mother-in-law, Eleanor Folk, and Serena is still there kind of in in Escondido, uh, putting things away and squaring away the house. We had the service at Eleanor's house, a beautiful hillside house overlooking a valley, one of Escondido's hidden valleys. That's what the name Escondido or hidden means. And so one of those valleys is what her, uh, her home overlooks. And at that service, um, we celebrated many aspects of Eleanor's life, but one thing that Serena mentioned was that Eleanor had the wisdom. When when Serena's father died, when Serena was only seven, he died of lymphoma, Eleanor had the wisdom to bring her children to a church. Eleanor herself was the daughter of a Presbyterian pastor and uh, the granddaughter of a Presbyterian missionary in Korea, and those generations just went on with the Presbyterian tradition. Eleanor knew that when her husband died, when the father of those children at the age of seven and four, when their father died, she would need to bring them into a wider support system, a community of faith. And that's exactly when I met Serena at a family retreat when they arrived at that church, and we went off to Ramona and enjoyed a wonderful retreat. And, uh, Fell in love, I suppose. (laughs) Uh, We didn't get married right then. We waited a few years. Uh, But Eleanor had that wisdom. Let's get together with more people, with a community of faith to support me and my parenting, to support my children. What a wise soul, amen? We need this kind of connection. And when we have it, we may not even remember what it is to be without it. It's such a blessing to have. We may, those of us who've been in church a whole lot, might want to remember back to when we were young adults, when we left uh, home and went off to college or got a job and lived far away from our parents. Suddenly we realized it was hard to buy those groceries, and we sometimes felt very alone. We sometimes went hungry because we weren't uh, eating so many meals per day. It's a different way of living. Many people, more and more people in our society are living in that isolated way because of this idea that we can go it alone somehow. I remember when I uh, was in those young adult years myself, I moved to Chicago to go to seminary, actually to Evanston, north of Chicago. And my field education appointment was in a small Mexican-American church on the northwest side of Chicago. I was leading a Bible study with this small Mexican-American church one day, and I said, you know, I'm struck by the fact that you all are so close together as a community advocating for the rights of your neighbors in this small area of Chicago and and truly sticking together as almost as family. I said, that's so different from many of us like myself in Anglo culture who like to get as far away from home as we can. I'd been to Costa Rica at that point to study for a year and away to college and now in Chicago. I said, now I'm thousands of miles from my own family. And the lay leader, Emma, spoke up. She said, no, you're not. She said, this is your family. We are your family. We are your sisters and brothers in Christ. You see, Emma had apparently been reading her Bible a little bit, and so she knew that that's what Jesus says. Anyone who follows the will of Christ, will of God, is my sister or my mother or my brother. Emma knew this, and she welcomed me, and I could feel those roots find good soil. I could feel myself trusting once again in the power of community, even in Chicago, even with people who looked very different from myself and who spoke Spanish primarily, I still there in Christ found a community of faith to sustain me. Thanks be to God. In our scripture today from 1 Corinthians, Paul describes how this works, that we truly are like a body connected in the body of Christ. He says, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. We can do that to ourselves, can't we? Say, well, we don't really rate with the other uh, members of the body or the community, so I'm less of a part of the body. But of course, a foot is just important, as important Paul teaches. He encourages us in this way. 
As we were talking about this scripture in our last Wednesday's Bible study, uh, we were contemplating how these different body parts are all essential. One of our Bible study participants reported the good news that his wife's heart is strengthening with the medication that it's been on. And he also said that um, his son, who is an organist, has said that whenever he wants to share this, he should warn people that he's going to give an organ recital. Uh, it, it was a great joke, a great joke. <laughs> every organ, every part is essential. And uh, of course the heart is. And um, this family has learned this very well. Um, so whatever organ we might be, whatever part of the body, we are essential and we should claim ourselves as such. We should take heart, as it were, and grow in our discipleship in our unique way. Paul goes on in verse 21 to say, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again to the foot, the head to the foot, I have no need of you. Sometimes we feel like doing that, saying to one person or another, I'd rather not deal with you at all, I have no need of you. But just as soon as we go to that hand and say, I have no need of you, we realize that's our hand. We will need that hand. We need each other just as we need ourselves. Paul is challenging us to a radical understanding of where God is, that we might seek God in everyone and everywhere. It's a wonderful invitation. We might work on it throughout our lives. Jesus also invites us to do the same thing in his very first sermon, according to the Gospel of Luke. This is the first sermon he preached when he went into the synagogue and he was handed the scroll from Isaiah and read it aloud as a good rabbi would read from the scroll saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. He, was, he would normally give some words of wisdom and teaching about this scroll, but he simply says at that point, the shortest sermon in the history of sermons, he says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And the people realized that this prophecy of Isaiah, which was meant to foretell that the Messiah would come when all of these things began to happen, that has been fulfilled. It is being fulfilled before your eyes, Jesus says. It is being fulfilled in me, he teaches. Because in me, the captives are released. The blind receive their sight. The oppressed go free. This is the moment, Jesus says. Sermon over. Next week, we'll read the end of that. He says a few more words that offend people, and he almost gets killed by being run off of a cliff. But that's for next week. <laughs> but we hear Jesus' message that when the Messiah comes, the sign of it will be that all will be included. The captives will be released. Those who are ill will be healed. Those who are oppressed will go free. In other words, all will be included. God will make one what we have made disparate and separate in our world. God's work is always to unify us. Jesus prays the same prayer in the 17th chapter of John. May they be one, Father, as you and I are one. This is his prayer. We should never stop praying it. May we be one. May we, be, may we seek God in everyone and in everything. As Christians, we strive to see with God's eyes. We strive to see this unity that God sees. We strive to find God in all things. This is also the theme of the Center for Action and Contemplation Meditations that some of us are reading this year. The theme for the year of 2022 is nothing stands alone. Nothing stands alone. What a vital message for this pandemic year. Amen. That we cannot make it alone. Yes, we may have to be standing a little farther apart, but we cannot make it alone. How 
urgently we have learned this message in these last years. Amen? Nothing stands alone. Seek God everywhere and in everything. And one of the devotions from this last week took this to a whole new level. I was just blown away, and I want to share a reading with you by um, a Buddhist monk named Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, he used to teach in Escondido at times, in Escondido, California, and then go back to Vietnam and would teach around the whole world. But he writes about how we are connected not only to one another, but to all things, to everything God has made. At this very moment, the earth is a Above you, below you, all around you, and even inside you, he says. The earth is everywhere. You may be used to thinking of the earth as only the ground beneath your feet, but the water, the sea, the sky, and everything around us comes from the earth. Everything outside us and everything inside us comes from the earth. We often forget that the planet we are living on has given us all the elements that make up our earth bodies, the water in our flesh, our bones, and all the microscopic cells inside our bodies comes all from the earth and are all part of the earth. The earth is not just the environment we live in. We are the earth, and we are always carrying her within us. What a wonderful belief not only that, what a wonderful truth of our existence. In our Christian tradition, we put it in these terms, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In Ash Wednesday, we say, remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is good news. We are one with the earth, which changes everything. It means that we are one with everything we encounter, with all that we experience. And if we are to follow God's great commandment, love God with all that you are and love your neighbor as yourself, then to love ourselves means to love everything that God has made. As soon as we turn to hate that which is not ourselves, we are hating a part of ourselves by definition. We must love ourselves more completely by loving all that God has made. Amen? What if we put on these lenses and look at the world in this way, the way that God sees the world? What if we seek God everywhere and strive to love God in everything? Won't this change the way we drive? <laughs> Won't this change the way that we interact with customer service on the phone? Won't this change the way that we shop for our groceries? When we see the grumpy attendant ringing up our groceries <laughs> at times, we might want to in turn be grumpy ourselves. But no, what if we have already been seeking God in that person before we ever walked up to see them? I invite you in your mind's eye to see this world right now. The sun, the earth that God has created, the sunsets that we see, the, every smile that we encounter, every face that we see. I invite you to see in your mind's eye everything God has made, seeking God, and now striving to love the divine which we encounter in every moment, every breath that we breathe, everything that we encounter. Amen. When we reject others, we reject ourselves. When we reject this world, we reject ourselves. When we love others, we love ourselves. When we love God's creation, we love ourselves. We're invited this morning to seek God everywhere. It's a sort of preemptive way of loving, to seek God in someone before they ever treat us in any kind of way so that we might respond more loving to them, more lovingly to them, no matter how that exchange may unfold. It's a wonderful invitation that Jesus gives us, that St. Paul gives us, to see the unity that God has designed us to live in. 
Another important aspect of this is to make our everywhere a wonderful thing. Sometimes we confine ourselves to our family rooms and our TV screens so that seeking God everywhere becomes very, very boring. Uh, <laughs> we're invited in this world to go outside of our comfort zones, to meet people we would not otherwise meet, to seek God in adventuresome ways. Amen? I'm mindful again of my mother-in-law, Eleanor who did this. In fact, she took her daughter and her son to the Amazon River. They went down the Amazon River and had piranhas swimming underneath them at times and uh, crocod alligators watching from the shore. Um, so this was an adventuresome family, and it became clear that they sought God's beauty all throughout the world, wherever they could go. They went to the Cook Islands and traveled to beautiful places. Uh, in her young years, Serena was allowed to go to Russia and also to travel alone through Europe because her mother wanted her to see this world and to learn to love all aspects of this world. We're invited to get outside of our most comfortable places as much as COVID will allow us to do so and find God everywhere. Let us encourage each other in this task. Let us live always seeking God in every person and in everything God has made. For if we seek God in all things, we will be more likely to find him until we live always and everywhere with this love in our hearts. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together, One is the Body. As uh, Herman sings for us the first verse and as we join in the remainder of the song. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, it is good to rest in your presence, to seek you in all that you have made. Let your love guide us, live in us, as we follow you to wonderful new places, to discover you in new friends. In Christ, you call us to live as one church, as one human race, indeed as one creation. Grant us the belief and the hope which Jesus has taught us that your spirit draws us together with all people, that you meet us in those whom society would exclude, the oppressed, the prisoner, the disabled, the poor. Keep us awake to your presence. Give us eyes to see you and hearts to love you in every person, in all that you have made, 
so that your love may soon eclipse our fears, our anger, our bitterness, our resentment. Give us a mind to contemplate your glories, to perceive you in friends and in adversaries, in all that's familiar and all that seems foreign. May we seek you and love you with every moment we are blessed to live so that your everlasting peace may be known in all that we say and do. Holy Spirit, may your spirit continue to heal and cure our planet of this current pandemic. Heal each person who has become sick. Comfort those who mourn lost loved ones in our nation and throughout your world. Comfort also those in our nation and world who suffer discrimination and crimes of hate, such as the members of a synagogue this past week in Texas, threatened with violence. Deliver us from evil, O God, and let us redouble our commitment to making peace. Give us courage and hope, especially in these times, to seek your spirit everywhere so that you may reveal your goodness and love to the world. For we pray in your blessed name and join in a time of silent prayer, lifting our praises, petitions, and confessions to your spirit in this time of silence. As we have come silently before you, Holy Spirit, to bring to you our needs, our hopes, our dreams, let us now be united in our hearts and pray together. We pray for our home-centered members. We love them and we, we pray that our love may travel the distance between here and where each of them is, that they may know our love just as they know your love. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. We thank you for this church family and its many ministries. We especially lift up the rummage sale and all those who work and contribute so much toward raising money to help the needy in our community. Lord, in your grace, yeah. hear our prayer. We lift up all those who serve in the military, whether they serve here on American soil or whether they are far away from home. May they feel your love. May they work for peace in whatever way presents itself to them and may they come home safely to their loved ones. Lord, in your grace, yeah. hear our prayer. We have prayer concerns today from members of our congregation, and I'll begin with Kay Higby, who asks for prayers for her son, James, who is very ill. She also shares the joy that she and all of us are in the Lord. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. From Jan Oyne is, is the prayer for our dear Rudy Zitney, who is now on hospice care. We lift up prayers for his peace and comfort. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. From Carl Morrison, 
he requests continued prayers for Sue as she recovers from heart issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From Betsy Critchfield, she prays for successful left shoulder surgery tomorrow morning. Most of all, she asks for a smooth and uneventful recovery. We pray for her medical team as well, that their work will help her to have that smooth and, and, and uneventful recovery. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. From Sherry, she shares the joy for each and every day that God gives us. It is a blessing to be here with all of us together. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And Helen Carter asks for prayers for Danica, who is one of our twin granddaughters. She tested positive for COVID. We pray for her quick recovery from a very minimal experience of the COVID symptoms. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. We lift up also the people affected by the volcano in Tonga. It's a very, very far away place, Lord, and it's very easy for us to not turn too much attention to it. We do so now, and we do so with great love. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are insecure with food or housing, and we pray that their needs may be met through our own work and the work of others. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And we pray for your church throughout the world and the mission of the church to bring the love that you have given us so freely. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And now let us join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
word, holy, holy breath, breath, holy maker of all, with gratitude for making us one body, we share our gifts with one another and with your world. May these offerings bring freedom, healing, and good news to those who are most in need. Amen. <clears throat> Go from this place seeking God in everyone and in everything and loving God with all that you are. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit remain with us forever. Amen.